The first four parts of this question were dealing with straightforward amino acids. You had the acid group that had its pKa. You had the amine group that had a conjugate acid for which this was the pKa. However, there are a few amino acids that have the extra issues because the side chain has its own acid or basic properties. We talked about aspartic acid in the movies and here's its friend glutamic acid where you can see the side chain here ends with a cut with an acid group the COOH that has its own pKa. So that means that we've got an extra bit on our pH chain as we draw it out there's the 2.19 that we expect for the acid group there's the 9.67 that we expect for the NH3 plus the conjugate acid of the amine group and then we got the 4.25 in here associated with the green acid chain. So let's think our way through what that does to the structures. We start off at 1.5 where everything is acidic. Okay, The dominant form is with everything is an acid and so the COOH is acidic, the COOH is acidic and then the NH2 is its NH3 plus form. Now we may increase the pH until we get to this first pKa. This first pKa is associated with this acid group. So at this first pKa, 50% is where this is the acid and 50% is where this is its conjugate base. So no difference there, okay? Uh, brought in by this side chain is still the same. Well, there's our happy little acid group that we've always seen turning into its conjugate base. Now we continue on a little bit, although we do notice that this is where the Zwitter ion is. Okay, so after 2.19, this COOH, the red acid group, is now more and more and more in its conjugate base form. Now we keep going along and we come up to the pKa of the side chain. So at 4.25, half of it's going to be in this form and half of it's going to be in its conjugate base form. OK, so we got these extra structures to consider about. Here is the original all acidic form that is cationic as we're used to. We make one of the acid groups into its conjugate base and we get to the Zwitter ion. And then we keep going on and we make the other conjugate base of the other acid. OK, but this structure here is actually an anionic structure. OK, it's got a positive bit, but then two negative bits. So this is an anion. So the isoelectric point, which is, of course, associated with the Zwitter ion, is going to be in between 2.19 and 4.25. Nothing to do with the 9.67. So the PI, the isoelectric point of glutamic acid, is the average of 2.19 and 4.25, which is 3.22. So less than 2.19, everything's in the acidic form. 2.19, 50% the red acid, 50% the red conjugate base. 3.22, just about all this bitter iron. Start going past 3.22. And now this green acid is starting to become green conjugate base. So at 4.25, we now have 50% of the green acid 50% of the green conjugate base. Now, continuing on, of course, everything past this point is going to be affected to the NH3 plus NH2 end. Go to the very, very high pHs. Everything is all basic. So, of course, we turned already turned both of our acids into their conjugate bases. Up here, it's mostly NH2. So there's four possible structures here. The fully acidic end the fully basic end, the Zwitter ion, and then this extra structure here that is associated with the conjugate base of the extra acid in the side chain. Now, of course, this is a polar group, and because it's got that extra acid in there, we can define it as being a polar acidic amino acid. Finally, in question one, Let's go to one that again has got an extra nasty bit in the side chain, but in this case, it's a base in the side chain. So again, we're now going to have, just like we saw with glutamic acid and in the movies aspartic acid, instead of having two pKa's, there's three pKa's. Okay, we got the pKa1, 2.18. 
that is associated with the red acid group. We got the pKa2 that is associated with the conjugate acid of the blue amine, 8.95. And now the side chain has a basic group in here. This NH2 is a base, so it will have a conjugate acid, and its conjugate acid has a pKa of 10.53. So there's the important bits initially, right? The acid, the fundamental main amine, and then the side chain amine. So again, it's all acidic, pH. 1.5, everything's acidic. So that means that the COOH is going to be an acid in its acid form, its protonated form. The NH2 will be its NH3 plus here, as we've seen many times before. And this NH2 will also be in its acidic form, so NH3 plus. So there is the um, double cation, fully acidic form. So less than 2.18, this is the dominant feature. At 2.18, Half of it's going to be the COOH, and half of it is going to be the COO minus. But again, you've got the NH3 plus, NH3 plus, both of the amines are still in their conjugate acid form. So 2.18, 50% this, 50% this. And now we start increasing the pH and increasing the pH and increasing the pH. And the first of these basic groups that's going to be affected is the NH3 plus, the blue NH3 plus, because that's the one that's got the next pKa. So at 8.95, 50% of it's going to be this NH3 plus, and 50% of it's going to be the NH2 here. Again, we're well past the point where the carboxylic acid end is anything but its conjugate base, but we haven't yet started affecting this NH3 plus from the side chain because that's the important pKa of the side chain. Now, this is, of course, where we have our Zwitter ion. Okay, there's the overall charge is zero. We've got the anion end, and now the cation end is not what we're used to seeing on the NH2 of the main acid, but it's on the NH2, NH3 plus of the side chain. So what's going to be the isoelectric point of this particular amino acid? And the answer is that it's going to be the average of 8.95 and 10.53. It's going to be smack in the middle here. OK. Now, continuing on, the last structure, of course, that we need is the fully basic one. And that's where we got the COH is in its conjugate base, and both amines are now NH2s. So this 10.53, this last pKa, is where 50% of it has NH3 plus on the side chain, 50% of it has NH2 on the side chain. And of course, the actual amino acid has turned into its conjugate base base time quite a long way before. OK, so extra little complication when the side chain has its thing, has an extra acid or basic group there. How would we define? Well, first of all, this is, of course, the extra structure there. So in this case, that's the extra structure where we've got the regular amino acid in its vita ion form. But we haven't yet started converting the side chain conjugate acid to its original base. And of course, this is a polar group, but it's a polar basic group.